Hey guys, Joel here, Police 10-8 Talk. Uh, my partner, Officer Bosco, has a rare day off. So he's joined us out here in this beautiful, bright, sunny weather we're having. Uh, the purpose of today's video is the Black Hawk Epic Holster. We, uh, I've been a long time user, user of Serpa holsters. Back when they just basically had the trigger, trigger guard release. Then I evolved into the Serpa that took the Xiphus light, and now I've evolved into the Black Hawk Epic holster because uh, the, the Xiphus light and the 60 lumens just really wasn't cutting it. I had a TLR on another handgun that I really wanted to put on my duty gun. So I waited patiently. Finally, Black Hawk got them out to us. We'd actually seen a prototype of it 2009. 2009 at the shot show. At the shot show. We saw a prototype. It's last, been that long since they've been, been working on it. That was the last shot show they held in Orlando. But at any rate, we're here today. We're going to give our personal views and feelings on these. I've been, we've been carrying them for, what, three months? About three months, give or take. Three, yeah, months, three months, four months, somewhere in that range. Uh, if you can get a side shot here, this is the one in the plain finish. You only have the one thumb drive to release the holster, to release the handgun from the holster. Really nice feature. I have mine on the low drop shank. Uh, the one thing I could have suggested to Black Hawk, and it, it's something I'm going to undertake here in a while, is as you can see, I have small paws. So when I go to draw the handgun, I have to roll into it to bring it out because I, I carry my holster in the, in the straight position so that when I come out, I have to come straight up and then rotate out. That's my only, my only downside personally to this holster and it's not enough to keep me from wearing it at work every day. Uh, I'll let Officer Bosco give you his impressions and let him go over his holster with you. Uh, yes, I've been uh, been wearing it uh, as well for about three months now. I can honestly say it's probably the best holster I've ever used. I really enjoy it. I like it a lot. Um, I was a, kind of a fan of the Serpa, not 100%. I was still a Safari Land man. I pretty much always use Safari Land all the way back to the 070 SS3. So I've been with Safari Land a very long time. Uh, there are a lot of some features on this holster that I like quite a bit. Mine is actually left-handed. It is in basket weave because uh, I like carrying basket weave. <coughs> uh, you can actually get it in plain and basket weave. I think the only two options that you have. Uh, of course, the thumb thumb issue that he was talking about, I dressed it a little differently with mine. Um, what I did was I put it on a medium shank, which is not, which is probably about a half an inch higher than that one. And what I find with it when I put my thumb on it, it gives me more leverage to pull my pull the, the the pistol out uh, the one thing I do like about this that, that the hood on the SLS and the ALS holsters for Farley the only real complaint I've ever had is if you got to reholster in a hurry you may accidentally slap the hood up and that basically that means you got to pop the hood down to get the gun back in like if you're like struggling with somebody that that actually can happen the hood you can move back pretty easily the one feature I like is the fact that like the Serpa you have to push this down to get this to lock which I think is a nice feature. And you have to push and push, make sure in the draw or reholster, you have to push the but button all the way down. Yeah. yeah, you can't fudge the button. The button, what I do is a lot of times when I draw, I almost push the gun, push my entire hand and the gun down a little bit on the side to draw. Because I find that that makes it, it it's more of a muscle memory, so I remember to push that button all the way down. But the medium shank, the issue he was having when I had on a low drop, which is what it came with, I had that same issue, but since the medium, I put it on the medium, that issue really just doesn't exist for me. It seems like I get more leverage on it, which is something I suggested uh, suggested to, to Officer Joel. The one thing also I did too is one of the things that's nice about the Blackhawks, as opposed to the Safari Lands, is you can adjust the cant on these holes, which means you can move it back, you can move it forward. I have mine at a slight angle, as you can see. I don't know if you can get this on the video or not. But mine's not straight, it's actually canned yeah, slightly mine's to straight, the bottom. Pretty much straight up and down. And Bill's has got mine's a forward can. can. 
he can, he, he can do the straight up draw, I can't do it. This actually lets me be able to kind of draw it slightly back because I, I have troubles with the straight up draw, I can't do it or I have issues with it, I'm just not very good at it. Whereas when I moved it back or canned it slightly, the draw, the draw to me is a lot easier. You know, like I said, the great thing about this hood too is that it automatically locks. So even if you're reholstering and you don't have the hood, like sometimes on traffic stops, I'll pop the hood. So that way, mm -hmm. I, if I gotta go straight, all I gotta do is just hit the one, one release and I'm done. But it's a very, it's a very quick holster. It's very efficient. It does, um, it does take a lot of different lights. So that's one of the nice things about it. It'll take up to like I think an X500, I think from Surefire. So mm -hmm. it, it comes it's with pretty two, adaptable. It comes with two, two or three adapters. Yeah. Now there was one issue that I would like to bring up. It's is the fact that. I've seen a lot of websites where it says that it's a that it technically will fit a 17 and like the 19, which is a compactor. Like we carry 22s in my department, I carry a 23, which we carry those also. It is gun specific. It is only it's technically only supposed to work with the 17, the 22, and the 31. Which if you're carrying one of the compacts, that's something you might want to consider. Um, now I actually was able to super glue a little bumper a little rubber bumper on the bottom of this so it hits the flashlight so it'll fit the 23 i had to basically basically more or less put that in there kind of modify it so it fit my 23 but technically Otherwise, it's only supposed it, to be for the 17 22 and the 31 the full size because without the bumper he put in there he, he had probably about a half inch of up and down play yeah which as you guys know is not acceptable in a duty holster at all yeah now if you also go with the like the X300, the X500 Surefire, the uh, light, the light piece on the right, light reflectors on those are a little bit longer. Now, if you had those on your gun, you probably wouldn't even need to do that adapter. It probably would still fit the 23 if you had the longer head on there, because that's all I'm doing is just the bumper is just keeping that from going too far into the holsters is all, all it's doing. So if you had an X300, an X500 with that longer head on there, you probably wouldn't even need to mess with it. You probably still could fit it in, but technically it's holster specific for those three models. Hey guys, that's about it. We're going to uh, change camera angle and uh, just do a draw or two and, and put a couple of rounds down range. One more quick note on the on the drawing of the handgun out of these. You, you can't go into it going, oh, I'm going to go really fast, really fast. Yeah, you, I, when I'm doing it, I, I just keep, just stay smooth. Because if you try and go too fast with it, you're going to short stroke the button and you're not going to get out at all. So uh, Smooth is fast. Amen. Smooth is very fast. Bad, was that accurate fast is fine, but accuracy is final. So being fast is always too much for you. All right, guys, well, we're going to shift camera angles and uh, demonstrate a couple draws. Be back to you in a bit. Thank you.